Hello and welcome to this week's edition of LCAT News. I'm your host, Jen Carlos. It wasn't your typical opening of the school year at East Longmeadow High School this week, beginning first thing Tuesday morning when students were welcomed with a red carpet of sorts. Dozens of high school staff in bright red t-shirts lined up to give high fives as students made their way into the building. Hey, welcome back everybody. Welcome back everybody. Welcome back. From t-shirts affirming good vibes only to special activities over three days that emphasize positive relationships and shared enthusiasm for learning, students for the most part seem to find the transition from summer to school somewhat refreshing, even if the heat and humidity were oppressive. If we're truly working to grow and get better and keep climbing, everything that we do is a test. The first day of school, 100 degrees in the classroom, it's a test. Yesterday, another 100 degree day, it's a test. But everybody shows up this morning, everybody walks in the auditorium, ready to go. It's just another test. With record heat indexes on Tuesday and Wednesday, the East Longwood Rec Department opened the town pool at Pine Knoll to allow all residents for free swimming as one way to beat the heat. Rec Director Donna Prather and Town Manager Denise Menard were on hand to welcome the handful of families who jumped at the opportunity. Pine Knoll sells pool memberships throughout the season, but Prather says she decided on Sunday night to open it to anyone in town who simply needed a place to cool off. There were free popsicles too and a cannonball contest for the kids. Prather says the pool in the entire recreation area is a hidden gem in town that a lot of people don't seem to know about. Clearly for these kids, there's no better place to be on a sweltering afternoon. I was like, I think our highest jump for sure. What did I get? <laughs> oh, you got it. <laughs> Last Sunday, the East Longwood Rec Department hosted a coaches appreciation and community movie night, which featured local musicians, food and craft vendors, the Flying High Dog Show, and ended with a free outdoor screening of Cars 3. Here's a look at the bustling eel event. There's one. Help me count. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Hasn't dropped one yet. Good boy, Maui. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. He's getting dizzy. You can find extended highlights of the event on LCAT's YouTube and cable channels. On Tuesday, the Mattresses Against Bullying event was held at Mattress Firm in East Longwood Oaks Center Square Shops. Hosted by Unify Against Bullying and the Mattress Firm, the event included a raffle and food donated by Center Square Grill. LCAT stopped by and spoke with Unify co-founder Susanna Zemba, who explained how the organization got its start and how it continues to celebrate diversity. So our family was holding a fundraiser through our family business and we were interested in looking for a anti-bullying charity that represented uh, schools and children of all of Western Mass. Uh, unfortunately, trying to find something that was as inclusive as what we were looking for was a little bit more challenging than we anticipated. So we thought, why not start a charity? Um, so we, our charity actually represents kids and uh, schools from all over Western Mass and maybe even into Connecticut. The good news is with Unify Against Bullying, we really, really, really love people to get involved. Kids of all ages, people of all ages. Um, ways to do that is by going to our website, which is www.unifyagainstbullying.org, and click on the button that says, How Can I Help? And you'll see all ways of being able to get involved. The state primary election will be held this Tuesday, September 4th, at Birchland Park Middle School. Polling hours are 7 a.m. until 8 p.m. Among the races on the respective party and precinct ballots this year are the Republican governor's race between Charlie Baker and Scott Lively, Bob Massey faces Jay Gonzalez on the Democratic side, the Democratic first congressional race between Richard Neal and attorney Tahira Amatul Wadud, and a challenge to Secretary of State William Galvin by Josh Sakim. State Senator Eric Lesser, 1st Hamden District Representative Brian Ash, and 12th Hampton District Representative Angelo Pupolo are all unopposed in the Democratic Party. If you have old oil-based paints, motor oil, pesticides, or other household hazardous waste, East Long Meadow Recycling Coordinator Liz Bone has a message for you about how you can dispose of it free of charge. Hi, I'm Liz Bone, the Re Recycling Coordinator for East Long Meadow, and I wanted to tell you about our household hazardous waste event coming up on September 15th. 
Hazardous waste is banned from disposal at the curbside, so residents can dispose of these dangerous chemicals at local events or through collection centers. This year, our event will be held on September 15th at Minnetog Regional High School in Wilbraham. Residents will need to call the Health Department at 525-5400, extension 1103, to make an appointment between September 10th and 13th. Residents calling will need to let us know what kind of hazardous waste they have and the quantity. Residents with three gallons or less are encouraged to combine with neighbors to lower the town's costs. This event is free for residents, but please no businesses. If you have hazardous waste during the year and you've missed the event, please check out the NEDT Household Hazardous Waste Collection Center in Westfield. You can reach them at NEDT.org. They collect waste all year long, but fees may apply. Thank you for recycling. A reminder that on September 11th, the annual candlelight vigil on the lawn of the Summers Road Fire Station will be held at 8 p.m. in memory of those who lost their lives during the September 11th terrorist attacks. Residents are invited to bring a candle and join the East Long Meadow Fire Department, town officials, dignitaries, and fellow townspeople to pay tribute in this solemn remembrance. Light refreshments will be provided following the ceremony. The Town Council and Planning Board have both scheduled meetings for September 11th due to this Tuesday's elections, but note that the Council meeting will begin one hour earlier at 5 p.m. to allow Council members to attend the candlelight vigil by 8. The Planning Board meets in the School Committee Conference Room at 6 p.m. with the continuation of a public hearing for a subdivision on Maple Street on the agenda. The Council on Aging reminds older residents to be on the alert for deceptive advertising around Medicare services and coverage. According to the Better Business Bureau, an astounding $60 billion was lost to Medicare fraud in 2017 alone. Mail that purports to be official or urgent or telephone scams offering upgrades of paper Medicare cards to plastic have recently been on the rise in Massachusetts. Remember to never give personal information in any form to anyone purporting to be from a state or federal agency. All correspondence initiated by such agencies is through first-class mail. Recognizing likely scams can help to protect your identity and personal data and reduce the cost of fraud for everyone. Here's what's happening at the library this upcoming week. On Saturday, September 8th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. is a teen creative writing workshop. Participants will be asked to produce and share written work and provide constructive feedback. This workshop will act as an introduction and exploration into sci-fi and fantasy with a focus on mastering the fundamentals of fiction. This workshop is for teens ages 14 and up. Registration is required. On Saturday, September 8th from 1 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. is ELPL Eats. This week, the group will be cooking from Half-Baked Harvest by Tegan Gerard. Bring your favorite recipe from the book and enjoy lunch with your new foodie friends. Space is limited and registration is required. This program is geared for adults. And on Monday, September 10th from 10 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. is Welcome Baby. Welcome Baby is a fun and instructive gathering for first-time parents of infants ages newborn to 12 months. Take advantage of this valuable resource as you adjust to life with a new baby. This is a wonderful opportunity to meet with new parents, share your ideas and questions, as well as read, sing, and play with your baby. Sponsored by Pathways for Parents. To start off National Self-Care Month, we sat down with HeartSong Yoga co-owner Sheila Magalhaes to discuss just how beneficial yoga is. Hi, I'm Sheila Magalhaes. I'm the co-director of HeartSong Yoga Center in East Long Meadow, um, along with my husband, Tony. And we're celebrating our 25th anniversary this fall. And we're really proud and excited that people are curious and interested about yoga and wanting to learn more. So thank you for, for having me. So yoga is, um, I would like to call it an art or a science or a philosophy that is based in the Indian culture, where it came from, India, that is nearly, some say, four or 5,000 years old. It's a very old practice, a very old philosophy. The word yoga means union, to join or to yoke together. So it's this idea that you bring in relationships of yourself to your inner wisdom, yourself to one another, yourself to the natural world, um, the yogis over the centuries were kind of trying to map out um, how to live the most healthy and um, well-balanced life and lifestyle through the practices of yoga. So it's not just exercise, but it's also um, a way, a perspective, a way of thinking um, about your world and your life. The idea in a yoga session, whether you're in a class or you're doing a home practice on your own, 
is the mindfulness piece of it, so that as you begin your practice, however long it is, even if it's just a few breaths or a few moments, you're connecting to the rhythm of your breath, and you're doing your best to keep your attention focused on what we call the present moment. So that when I think about it earlier on, when I was younger, I used to be um, in a small gym and you'd get on like maybe a, a Stairmaster or something. And so you're on the Stairmaster and then there's um, a magazine in front of you and your best friend next to you and a big bunch of televisions in front of you. And you're doing everything you could possibly do just to get through the exercise and not think about it. But in yoga, it's mindfulness. It's like, are you thinking about your shopping list? No, come back and do this work. Are you worried about a conversation you had this morning? Come back and do this work. And you draw yourself back to this space, this time, this moment, where the yogis say, and it's true, this is the only thing that's real, this moment. Because everything else is in the past. It's gone. And everything in the future is just, we're making it up. We have no idea what's going to happen next. Right? Flexibility, people think about flexibility because they always see pictures, the, like Instagram and, and in the magazines, they are always models who are twisted up in really complicated poses. And you look at it and go, I could never, I can't, I can't do that. Like, I can't hardly, I can't even sit like this. So what we, what we do is we say, okay, if you can't sit like this, then you can sit like that. Or we can get you a chair or stack up a couple more cushions or put a blanket underneath your knee, right, to make you comfortable. And if you can reach your shin, cool. If you can reach your ankle, that's, that's nice. If you can touch your toes, it doesn't make you a better person. <laughs> it's, so it's okay. You can be stiff and tight and, and athletic and super strong. Um, it's a balance between strength and flexibility. When you come to a yoga class, you regulate your breathing. It quiets down your nervous system. You relax those tense muscles. You do that work of mindfulness and you remember that you're here now and not what's ahead and not what you're worrying about. And that you're not those thoughts, like the things we always say to ourselves, our critical mind. If you're not, you say, I'm not good enough or I can't get this done or I'm never going to finish this. And you're like, okay, nope, just I'm good right now. Yoga says who you are right now is perfect in every way. So don't, don't worry so much about trying to be different. And when you hear those messages from your teachers or from your colleagues, it's like you go, oh, a weight of the world just falls away. When, it, when we say namaste, that's a greeting to begin a practice, to end a practice, and it literally means that the light in me sees the light in you. That underneath all of this, we're the same. If you don't like your first class, try another one, because you might be surprised um, that the right time, the right class, the right teacher, maybe a, even a different time in your life is a better time to start a practice. Just, I say, um, as someone had said once on a New Year's resolution, find a yoga class, take it, and don't stop going for the rest of your life. That's it for this week's edition of LCAT News. I'm Jen Carlos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.